the album's entitled The Great and Secret Show. What is The Great and Secret Show? Well, originally it was a book by Clive Barker. I guess it's best summed up as the essence and ideology of what the album's about. Um, sort of the pulse behind the world, uh, a secret nightscape, uh, well, escapism really, in, in general. Which artist have you used for the, for the album cover? Um, a, a friend of ours called Drake Mephesta. Uh, he's done a wonderful job of just turning the album into a complete um, phantasmagorical kind of walkthrough. So you have to look for little things, there's little hidden meanings and reflections of the songs behind the lyrics. Um, and I think, yeah, it, it suits, um, suits the title because it's almost like this sort of midnight nocturnal circus full of weird and wonderful imagination. Okay, so is there is there a concept behind the album, or is there a certain a, a lyric, either a lyrical theme, or is there a story that? Well, it's kind of linked them? by, but by strange and wonderful things, uh, and seeing the title as this overarching description. And so, can you tell us any more about the, the songs? What are they? I suppose what the, the lyrical themes there, what are they about? What what can people expect when they hear the album? Um, well, it's, lyrically it's a little bit road dull, a little bit H.P. Lovecraft, a um, little bit Sylvia Plath, all sort of mixed together. There's a sort of carnival bazaar feeling yeah, to exactly. it, I, yeah. I felt from what I've heard. That kind of pre-internet horrors that do you look, or as soon as you look you want to turn away because you're not quite sure. Yeah, what there's certainly saying, a lot about that, about the artwork. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I say modern, it, there's no sort of... Uh, skyscrapers or, or, or cars or um, you know supermarkets in, in the artwork it has that kind of uh, timeless wonder about it um, so you don't really know what epoch or what situation or what time period it's set in it's just weird and wonderful and it's all just a big eclectic mixing bowl of stuff so when it came to writing the album did you write together or was it something that that Danny, you wrote the lyrics, and Dan, did you do? A, you did a lot of the the music. Yeah, at first I think that was the case. Obviously, we we had a couple of lineups. So, but near the end, obviously, when it came to sort of you know this lineup as it is, Lauren was bringing in loads of ideas, and then it kind of went up when Lauren joined. Like we kind of went another level just by her. You know, yeah, parts or, and originally, and like you say, we had to find our identity. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of going backward and forward. And that was a nice thing as well. Is like you, we became a band. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Where you, you still probably get bands now where two members only do the writing and that's it. You know, everyone was bringing ideas and everyone was open to it. And of course, geographically, you all live close close enough together to be able to be a band. So writing must be easier when you're in the same time zone. So many bands, Cradle being well, yeah, one. exactly. I mean, Cradle and Filth are literally spread across the galaxy. Mm. You know, Canada, Czech Republic, Scotland. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we can literally spit and uh, hit Dan from, from my house. And well, people do like to spit. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> Might get the street. But that's what makes it a lot easier as well, is yeah. the fact, yeah. They're, they're, there's a common thread and uh, a, a common working ground. Yeah, it's, it's quite exciting for me, to be honest, because I, I kind of come from quite a different background into this. And, uh, Writing with these guys has been kind of quite educational for me. Doing metal, first time ever, really exciting. And we're all kind of really excited about writing the next album as well. Now that we kind of really feel that we've we've gelled so much together over the last you know few months writing, and we've got loads of new ideas and it's getting pretty exciting really on all on all fronts. I think. Yeah, we yeah, have, yeah, but we've got our level. You know, yeah. you've, you've got your kind of this is where we're sitting. Do you know what I mean? We've got to improve on that. Yeah. You know, it's nice, you know, as you said, like, you know, when we were experimenting in the early days, where it is, you know, now it's sort of fun to say, this is what we've government got, is. We've got you know sound, I mean? definitely. We've all kind of got a role and, in it. And let it be said that we, this album has taken sort of about eight months to, to come to fruition. And not a solid eight months. We, we nibbled at, we did the drums in one tech, you know, session, and then uh, we had other commitments and came back to it, which was actually quite a good way to record because it gave you enough time to go away and sort of analyse it and improve upon it and then Scott Atkins who produced the album, um, textbook, 
um, was very, very good in steering it in the way we want to do. He had this policy, it was like, there's too many bands out there at the moment polluting the metal highway, and so you've got to do this. Oh no, that's crap, you've got to get rid of that. And he was quite firm about yeah. some things. Yeah. He's quite a hard taskmaster, isn't he? From what I, from well, that's what, what you need to get to get your best performance out. It's no good someone sitting there and going, you know what, that's fine, let's, you know, let's break for lunch and some biscuits. And just, I mean, I spent two days at one point just listening to a bloody snare sound. Mm. Literally drove me insane. That's the thing, it's it a good work ethic, yeah. though, isn't it? If it means coming back, and, and even if it means you've recorded something, and then you know two weeks later you think, well, right, actually we're going to change that. We don't like that anymore. So, Lauren, you're, you're providing keys, but you also do some vocals, backing vocals, aren't you? Yeah. But people are you yeah. people are quite you <laughs> people are quite used that. Um, female vocals appearing alongside Danny Phil. Yeah. But your vocals are very different to the other female vocals that we've heard on Cradle albums. You know, they're very different to the kind of operatic stuff from Sarah Jezebel Diva back in back in the in the nineties and early two thousands. I think it was quite important to avoid kind of trying to follow that kind of style because we are a completely different band and we're doing completely different kind of music, although obviously I mean I've I love all the vocals on the pair of stuff that I've, that I've listened to. It's nice to kind of, that we're kind of, some of them are quite siren-esque, I suppose, at, at yeah. certain points, but also some more kind of poppy sounding or kind of plain vocals that sort of follow the tone of my voice, rather than me trying to adopt a certain style that I've seen elsewhere, I think we thought. Just I think that, that and that's, that's what works towards it, is that it's quite unique in some respects. The marriage of like I say, the sum of our parts, how it all comes together. There's some bits you think, well, how on earth did they come up with that part? Because it's so, the blend is, is quite strange, to say the least. But it works together, you know, and that, that's, that's how we've, we've, we've come to the culmination of the album and the end of the eight months of working closely on an album together. It actually feels a little sad to walk away from it now that we actually finish. I don't know, I noticed she had a glimmer of a tear in her eye there. Yeah. Um, Look at them. <laughs> it's a very sad and truthful story. <coughs> one that will go down in the annals of woe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think po collectively and poetically this album's come together um, from six different, or seven if you count, Scott's involvement as a producer. And he's been very important, like I say, as steering the ship. The ship of devilment. There's enough in there to be eclectic and different and a bit mysterious and a bit woo and a bit wild and strange. But overall, they're very um, anthemic uh, and catchy. And yeah, I think there's enough there to, to satisfy a lot of people from different genres in the Mill, even outside the Mill uh, Institute, I think. Great and secret show